Hi everyone, I'm Brenda. Welcome to Phoenix Furniture Studio. In today's video, I'm going to be working on this Art Deco drinks cabinet. I found it on Facebook Marketplace for, I think it was about £50. And as soon as I saw it, and I saw that wood grain, I knew that I wanted to work on it. So in this video, I'm going to refinish the outside and I'm going to decoupage on the inside to give it a little bit of wow factor when you open the cabinet up. So stay tuned if you want to see how I turn this pretty drinks cabinet into a stunning drinks cabinet. The first thing that I had to do when I started working on this piece was take it all apart. Because I wanted to decoupage it and refinish the outside, I knew the easiest way for me to be able to do all of that was just going to be to break it down into pieces basically. When I'm uh, dismantling um, a vintage piece of furniture I like to keep all my screws and hinges together and then label them where I've taken them from so when it comes to reassembling the piece of furniture I know exactly what hinge goes where with what screws and the reason I do this is because with vintage pieces of furniture over time they'll move hinges will move as well so when you're reassembling it it's not like a, a new piece of furniture that you put together from ikea where every hinge goes everywhere um they can be a bit tricky about where they want to go back and and doors might not close flush or it might not line up straight so your safest bet is just to keep a record of what goes where and put it back where you took it from i've had a couple of instances where I've just thrown everything into a container and when it comes time to put it together I've had so many issues trying to get doors to line up or close properly and that's because I'm not using the right hinge um, for that specific door. So as viewers of the channel, I wanted to ask what you prefer. Do you like the workshop noises in the background or do you prefer a bit of uh, quiet music in the background? I quite like both. So I just wanted to hear what your opinion was or if you like a mix of the both of the music and the workshop noises. Um, let me know in the comments below um, what you like hearing when you watch one of my videos. My 
workshop is in an old shipyard building and there are other people in the building with their own workshop so occasionally you might hear some banging or some people talking in the background and unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that but um and hopefully it's it's not too distracting but that's the joy of having a workshop in a building with other people I'm just going to speed through um, the stripping process only because I didn't like the stripper and I, it didn't work very well, whether that was user error or the stripper itself. Who knows? So I'm going to go through with another round of stripping with the stripper that I do use and like. I, I was just trying to use up uh, products that I had in my workshop, but I yeah, I won't be buying this one again. As you can see, it's still shiny. There's still varnish on the doors. It hasn't taken anything off. I'm just using some glee green <laughs> spirit to clean off that useless stripper. Uh, this is the paint stripper I no normally use, Paint Panther, and it works really quickly and I haven't had any issues with it ever. You can see where I'm agitating it there and it's got that brownie gloop, that's the varnish coming off. Going in with that green spirit again, just removing any of the leftover stripper after scraping and deactivating uh, the chemical stripper at the same time so it's, it stops uh, the chemical reaction. Now that all that stripper is removed and cleaned off, um, the next step is sanding. So I go in with uh, 220 grit sandpaper and I'm using a foam interface pad on my sander because there are curves on the doors and I don't want to um, sand through the veneer on those curves. I'm also just doing a bit of hand sanding I love this part where you can see how your wood is going to look once you've applied your top coat. It's a great preview of what the finished piece is going to look like. This is the wallpaper that I decided to use for the inside of the cabinet. I found it at a shop that was closing down it and it was just a open roll in the back. And to apply it to the backboard, I'm just using some Mod Podge, but any 
strong PVA glue would do. Um, I'm just using what I have open and getting a, a thin even layer on the backboard and also a coat, a thin coat on the paper. And the reason I do this, much like how you would apply wallpaper to a wall and pasting the paper, I find it gives a smoother finish um, with less air bubbles and wrinkles. I'll initially lay the paper down with my hands, apply any PVA glue um, in areas that might need a bit more. And then I'll use um, this wallpaper smoother, which I love. And I, I highly recommend if you're going to try decoupaging furniture. It just um, it smooths out the paper, removes any air bubbles, and it just gives the nicest finish for um, your decoupage paper. All the products and tools that I use in this video will be linked down below. Uh, most of them are affiliate links, which means I'll just all earn a small commission from your purchase. It won't cost you anything more. It's just a way that you can support the channel and I make a very, very small amount of money from those purchases, but every little helps. So thank you if you do use um, the links down below to, to buy anything. Another must have if you're going to decoupage furniture is um, some sort of blade but really, really sharp and change your blades often. Don't let them get dull. You'll, if you let the blade get um, a bit dull, you're going to have issues when you're cutting your paper. It's going to pull the paper, tear the paper. So always make sure you've got um, a really sharp blade for the, the cleanest cuts you can get. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone who does watch my videos. Every like, comment, share, subscribe, it, it means the world to me and I appreciate each and every one of you. I, I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel this year, so any support would be very welcome. I've got links down below for buy me a coffee, my Amazon wish list. Um, so if if you want to support me in any way, please, please do have a look in the description box down below. As I said, I'm, I'm grateful for any support and I appreciate each and every one of you just for tuning in and watching. So thank you in advance.
let me know in the comments down below if you've ever decoupaged a piece of furniture i must admit when i first did my first piece of decoupage furniture which was actually the first piece of furniture i ever did i did find it quite intimidating um but like with anything practice makes perfect and I'm by no means perfect, but I'm a lot better than I was when I first started. Here I'm using the Frenchique, um, Frenchine shimmer powders. I'm just mixing the gold and the silver in a ratio of one to one because I want to achieve quite a cool tone gold. And I'm just using their finishing top coat. And I think I applied two spoons in the end. It, just eyeballing it i was just looking for the consistency that looked good to be able to paint it onto the furniture piece and then i'm just going through and painting different areas that i want to highlight with that gold and as you can see, it's a really good match for the embossed gold print on the wallpaper. I decided I wanted to add some detailing on the inside of the drawers to complement the wallpaper and in the end I decided on this Monstera leaf stencil. So here I'm just um, creating a border for the stencil using some masking tape and that uh, gold liquid mix that I created. I'm just using a cheap artist brush to dab on the gold in the stencil but you could also use a sponge that would work just fine. I ended up giving this two coats of the gold to get a really nice um, coverage on the stencil and the stencil was one I just picked up from Amazon. I'll, ha I'll have it linked down below as well. I used Fiddy's hard wax oil in a satin finish 
to top coat all the uh, wood elements. This is very similar to Osmo oil, um, but I just find it's a little bit easier to use than Osmo. And also the recoat time is much shorter than Osmo, which when you're on a time constraint um, is great. And as you can see, I, you can either apply it with a um, lint-free cloth or a sponge. It, it gives you the same results. Just remember to apply it in thin, even coats and do multiple coats. That'll give you a much nicer, smoother finish. I don't tend to use um, varnish for my raw wood surfaces. I tend to go with a hard wax oil. I just, pers for me, it's a personal preference. I prefer the way that the hard wax oil um, makes the wood grain pop. It just adds a, a lovely luster to the wood. These were the original mirrors that came with the cabinet and I really wanted to keep them in the cabinet. There was some damage to them and some areas where the mirroring um, was peeling away. So I, start, I started by removing them and then I gave them a really good clean with um, some glass and window cleaner and 4-0 fine steel wool. And you'll be amazed by how much dirt and grime had collected on these mirrors. When I wipe wipe it away with the tissue paper, it, it looks revolting. <laughs> To try and cover up those areas where the mirroring had come away I found a product um, Rust-Oleum Mirror Fit Spray and I sprayed some of that in the areas where there was no silver mirroring because I've never re-silvered a mirror and I really didn't want this to be my test piece project and the Mirror Fit Spray it worked really well at sort of taking your eye off the fact that there was silvering missing from there. It wasn't perfect, but it, it definitely, it looked much better. Have any of you re-silvered or re-mirrored a mirror? Let me know how hard or how easy it is if you have, and whether it's something that I should add to my to learn list. <laughs> I also kept the original hardware on the piece so all I did was gave it a really good clean um, with some barkeeper's friend and with some 4-0 fine steel wool 
and it came up really nicely. So we're in the final stages now of just reassembling the cabinet and reattaching all the hardware. I did add some uh, legs to the cabinet as well, just to raise it slightly off the ground and add a little bit of height to it because it is quite a, a small dinky cocktail cabinet. It did add a nice little modern touch to the cabinet as well. And here's the final reveal. I really love how the drinks cabinet turned out. It's still got that original look to it on the outside, but as soon as you open it up, there's this gorgeous wallpaper inside and it just is surprising and beautiful at the same time. This sold um, within a couple of weeks of me listing it it sold for 450 pounds um, and we dropped it off with the people who bought it and it looked gorgeous in their living room. So I'm really pleased with how this one turned out and that it's now in its new forever home. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment below. I love engaging with you. So let me know what you thought about this flip and I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Thank you.